Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. We gotta celebrate right now. Celebrate. You guys are crazy. <laughs> We're so glad you're here tonight. You know, God created fun and God created happiness. And, and one of the first sermons that Jesus spoke, it was called the Beatitudes. And, and he started talking about attitudes that would bless us. He goes, if you have this attitude, you'd be blessed. And one of the first attitudes he says, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Blessed are those that realize they need God. And, and, and when, 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 I study, when I study the Bible, I, I like to look up like words. What do they mean? Like what does bless mean? And, and the first definition of bless means happy. It means happy. So he has beatitudes and, that, and they're in the scripture. And he says, if you have this attitude, you realize you need me you're going to finally find true happiness. And it's found in a person. And I'm telling you, this is more than a good time. I could introduce you tonight to the one that could change your life, take away your depression, set you free, give you a brand new start. Today, open your heart, receive what God has for you. We got a lot of things for you. We're so glad you're here. This is the first time you are part of the family. Um, this Friday, we have our Women's Unity Night and Men's Unity Night. It's going to be, ladies, you know where you're supposed to be on Friday night? It's Ladies Night. And Friday night is going to be right here, Friday night, right here. And my daughter, Abriana, is going to be speaking, and she's amazing. So she'll be here this Friday. All the ladies, supporters, they're going to love to have you there. And we have Men's Unity Night as well. And I don't know if the men's... Are the men meeting in here or are the ladies meeting here? Okay, I don't, because last time they said the ladies are meeting here because they had more women than men. I don't know. Whoever has the most takes over the room. Let's just do that. <laughs> so, um, but we have Jonathan Kahn coming out next week. Make sure you don't want to miss that. I'm telling you, we have some services that are going to change your life forever. So make sure you show up to these services. And right now we got Montel. Jordan, this is how we do. And, and Kristen, his wife, and they're a wonderful couple. Uh, she's come to our women's conference and blessed us. And they're going to be ministering together tonight. And I just, I just pray that you'll hear something that you could take into your life, learn and apply it to your life. They've gone through a lot of trials, tribulations. Um, of course, he, he had a platinum record, double platinum record, I think triple platinum record. Um, but he said after it's all said and done, he gave all that up to follow Jesus Christ. Because in the music industry, in the music industry, what they were selling, they wanted him to be a, you know, a, an, a sex idol and all that stuff. And, and he decided, man, I, he, you know, there was a time in his life that he would ask him, are you married? What's your status? And he would say, I'm married to my music. But it got to the point where he lost, he was losing his marriage, he's losing everything. And he realized, I got all this, but I'm empty. And he made a decision, I'm gonna give it all up to keep my marriage, I'm gonna give it all up to have a relationship with God. And today, he said, it is worth giving it all up to right now fulfill the greatest purpose in the world to live for Jesus Christ. And he says, I got peace. I got joy. I got everything that life would have to offer. Let's give them a way we're allowed to welcome. Let them know you're ready to receive from God. How you doing, Wayworld? How What's up? Church? Woo! Come on, let's give Jesus a shout of praise in this place. Hey! Hallelujah! Thank hey! you, Jesus. Man, it's good to be in the building. Oh, What's up, man. family? How y'all doing? Hey, do me a favor. Off family. script. The song you was just playing, what was that? The, the beat y'all was just playing. The, what was that? Just bring that groove back. The, 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 yeah, that one. 
celebrate. That right there? That's it. I'm kind of buzzing, it's all because the way they do it like nobody does. It's all my neighbors, you got much flavor. And we'll never come whack on an old school track. This is how we do it. It's Wednesday night, and I feel all right. All right, all right, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm sorry. You're not ready. God bless. You're not ready. Yo, God bless y'all. Be seated. Be Amen. seated. <laughs> oh. If we was taking communion, I'd say, tip up your cup and throw your hand. Never mind. No, see? Y'all not ready. Only for communion. Amen. <laughs> y'all supposed, I thought y'all was going to be prepared for us to. <laughs> Come on in here. All right. <laughs> I'm playing. Yo, it's good to see y'all. Man, it's, it's good, so good to be to home. Y'all. Oh, my goodness. This is our home away from home. We love the way, y'all. You have no idea. You have no idea. I'm normally a scripted person. I'm like a stick to the script thing. But when I'm here, man, I just feel like. The Holy Ghost jumps on him, y'all. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. So I just got to start out just by saying, first of all, I'm Montel. I'm Kristen Jordan. And we are your extended family. We like your cousins. Your country cousins. From down in the ATL. Hey. Uh, and uh, we had some really cool moments right here yeah, in San Bernardino. So thank yeah. you. Thank you, pastors. I thank cannot you, tell thank you, thank you how much I love and adore your pastors. Yeah. Okay, like they're legit, the real deal, y'all. Pastor Marco and Lisa, man, first of all, if you don't know, please know, these are some of the realest you will ever meet. Oh, they know. Oh, man. They know. They know. Man, oh, man, oh, man. And, and Gabriel and Abriana. There are people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are my people. Yeah. yeah. And, so, you know, you're, you're dope when you are great pastors, but then when you make great pastor kids, shh, yeah. come on, come on. Y'all doing it. Y'all doing it. Yo, Easter Sunday, y'all just, some of y'all just, like, y'all had an amazing Easter services on this past weekend, and some of y'all, I don't know if it was your first time here for Easter. I don't know how many people this weekend maybe gave your life to Jesus, and now you showed up on a Wednesday. Is anybody here that Woo-hoo! I hear? Yeah. Congratulations. Hey, hey. Welcome to Wednesday. Welcome to Wednesday. That's awesome. Absolutely. So if you have your Bible with you or an electronic device. On silent. Amen. In just a few moments, we're going to be reading from Habakkuk 2. That's the first half of the Bible, but closer to the old end of the Testament right there, right? Mm -hmm. And although the scripture will be provided for you on the screen, we always encourage you to hold the word of God in your hand. That's right. As you're locating Habakkuk 2, Two, mm-hmm. I'm going to say a prayer over us today. Papa, we love you. Thank, Thank you, you for this opportunity. Thank you for being very present and very near. We thank you that we get to do this. We get to be in your presence. We get to sing your highest praise. And then we get to learn your word so that it can transform our lives, so that we can live a changed, transformed life and bring other people to know you as the one and only true and living God. Lord, we love you. Let you be in everything we say and everything we do. Let it lead back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, Whether you have been saved for a little bit of time or for a long time, Um, Our goal is to help equip our lives to receive vision from God regarding next steps in our development and how we grow greater in relationship with God, deeper with our spouse, our family, our our friends, and to get closer with others. And so Easter was just a few days ago, uh, and I know that once we receive salvation, once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, uh, we begin this journey, and that journey can mean a lot of different things. For some of you, after receiving Jesus, next comes baptism. And after baptism, you need to get into discipleship, uh, the leadership class they were talking about. Um, you need to be in devotionals. You need to be in the Word. You need to be in community, small groups, and establishing community with people so you're not doing life 
on your own. And um, these are just new steps, next steps in the life of every believer. And we believe that we're not just wanting to just believe in Jesus, but we also want to become disciples of Jesus, meaning we're walking like he walked and talk like he talked and start to do the things that we see and saw Jesus do. In other words, uh, walking into your next requires you to step out of your now. Okay? And so in order to... Walking into your next (laughs) requires you to step out of your now. And so today, my wife and I, we're pushing up on... 30 years of marriage. Say that with me. 30. To each each other. 30 years to each other. And uh, in that time, we want to talk to you today about having a vision for your family. If you're a note taker and you just got to know what is this message, we want to talk about having a vision for your family. And let me just say this just really quickly before uh, my wife reads reads the scripture. Um, Vision doesn't come horizontally. Vision comes vertically. Amen. In other words, if you're looking for vision from God by what you see in someone else's marriage or someone else's business practice or someone else's family or someone else's dead or someone else's that, that's not vision. That's not God vision. That's sight. That's something you can actually see. When God gives you vision, he's giving you something that you can't see, but he can see. And that always comes vertical from him into you so he can get it through you. And so we're going to be talking about having a vision for your family. And babe, go ahead and read the scripture in Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says it this way. Then the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain. Make it clear on tablets so that anyone who can read it can run with it quickly. The vision will still happen at the appointed time. It hurries towards its goal. It won't be a lie. If it's delayed, wait for it. Wait for it. It will certainly happen, and it will not be late. That's right. The scripture is a cheat code for establishing vision. It is. Vision only comes from God. Guess what? It's our job to do these things. The vision comes from God, but it's our job to do. Write the vision. Yep. That means write it down. Literally write it down. Make it plain. Keep it in plain sight. Keep it before you. Paste it on your wall. Wherever I was talking to Pastor Marco earlier, and I was talking about healing. And he said when he was looking for a healing, he kept scriptures in his pocket. Make it plain. Keep it with you. Always written. And speak it. That's right. And so understand, but that scripture, like she says, it's a cheat code. So when it says write the vision, you are writing the vision so that other people can know where to run. That's it. When you say make it plain, that means you're keeping it in plain sight so you remember it and other people can know how to run with it. And then when it says speak it, that's just because now that the vision is in front of you, you have to begin speaking that vision over and over over your life so that it covers where you are going and you don't get vision drift. Vision drift is when you think you're going a certain direction And just, if it's off, just a little bit, and just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, just you can just find yourself going a whole different direction because you got vision drift because you didn't write it, you didn't keep it in front of you, and you didn't speak it out over yourself over and over again. And so this formula of writing a vision, making it plain in plain sight, and speaking it, you can use this in almost every area of your life when it comes to your business. Write the vision, make it plain, speak it. When it comes to your marriage, write the vision, make it plain, speak, speak it. it over. When it comes to ministry, write the vision, make, make it, it plain, plain speak, speak it, it over. And so we're going to talk about having a vision for your family. And a lot of people don't have vision for your family. And when you don't have a vision, there's scripture that says people, people will perish. perish if you don't have a vision for your family. How we got vision our family is we went on a vision retreat and this was like for us we just took a couple of days we in the south and so we we didn't have like at the time uh, this wasn't like an expensive type of trip or something this was like we just gonna roll up to North Carolina we're gonna post up in a nice little hotel without the kids and we're gonna spend like two to three uninterrupted days of just ordering room service uh, and giving room service (laughs) I'm sorry, that's how we hey. stay married. Sorry, some of y'all missed that. We nasty because we married Jeez. for 30 years. Pray okay. for him, y'all. We, we, Amen. We, we have in room service. We order room service. And in that time, 
We're praying, we're seeking God, and we're asking him to give us vision. And I don't know if y'all know this, if you've ever done this. Has anybody ever made a vision board before? We've done vision boards before, and I, I put the little Bentley up there, and I put the Rolex up there in the house, you know, pick, pulling stuff out of the magazines and posting it up there. And listen, that's because that's what I can see. That's my vision. But that not, wasn't necessarily what God's vision was for me or for us. And so this is different from a vision board because you're going to God and you're saying, God, what is your will that your kingdom would come and your will will be done in me, in this earth, as it is in heaven, right? Yep. And in our marriage and in our family, these are the most rep- important relationships this side of heaven. Don't you think they deserve a vision? You have a vision for your business. And if you didn't and you asked somebody to invest in it, would they? Absolutely not. You would say they were ludicrous if they did. So why the most important relationships this side of heaven, don't you have a vision for them? Yeah. And so having a vision for your family, one of the things that we did was we went away and we asked God, okay, give us vision for our marriage. Give me a vision for our ministry. Give us vision for our life. And we actually asked for vision for our kids, for our family legacy. And so we started crafting a vision for our children. We documented our children's strengths, their weaknesses, and God actually gave us scriptures for each one of our children, like the ones that were uh, super, super wise or the ones that were very, very emotional. Like he gave us scripture that we could go to to be able to start speaking that, to write it down, to make it plain, and then to start speaking it. And we're able to start watching our children walk in the purpose he has for them because even as he's imparting and downloading those things into them, as parents, we're able to guide and to give vision to them from God that they can get themselves, but also just to help train up a child in the way they should go so that when they get older, they would not depart. So quick question. Do do y'all have a vision for your family? Do you have a vision for your future family, if you want to have kids or you may be young in marriage or, or have new, uh, new kids, uh, do you have a vision for that? We're going to help you out uh, with that. And this was our family vision. Babe, tell what was our vision? We love intentionally. We're led by our faith and we live in unity. Say it again. We love intentionally. We're led by faith and we live in unity. Yeah. And, and that for us, loving intentionally, being led by faith and living in unity. That might not be the vision that God gives to you for your vision, for your family, but what he brought us here to do is to share with you what he gave to us so that you can see that and see what we did, see the cheat code that he gives us to be able to to go, to to bypass the world and get to heaven and hear from heaven to download what he has for you and for your family. That's how you can pray for each other and love each other and fight for one another instead of fighting each each other, other. right? And we are better together. So the first thing he gave us was to love intentionally. Love intentionally. Guess what? And here's the ways that we love intentionally. One of the things that we do is we celebrate big. We're big on honor and we're big on celebrating because this is the thing. The world is quick to tell you what you're not. I don't need that. And I don't, my family doesn't need that. What they need to know is who they are. And so on their birthdays and on when they're doing something and they've achieved something, we celebrate big. We go all out. We buy gifts, balloons, the whole deal. My family at first was like, okay, y'all, you're, you're too much. But It's, it's too much. We, it isn't. We, it isn't. We, you know why? Because I want you to know that you're valuable and you're important. And I need you to know that I know it and you know it. And everybody else knows the value you have to me. Yeah, our birthdays be like five weeks, like like five. Of, <laughs> uh, it's like somebody in my family don't have a birthday right now, but we celebrating their birthday right now just because we just we stretch that thing out. Production, I don't know if we have a picture of our family uh, that you can put up there. If you do, I would love to be able to. I don't know if that came or not. If hey, there they are. Yay! Okay, those are my people. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna see that. Hold yeah, on, let me see. man. Oh yeah. man, that's my yeah. crew. Listen, so <laughs> obviously my husband next to him is our youngest son, Skylar. He is playing football up in Delaware State, 
And my oldest son is on my side right there. That is Christopher, and that is his wife, Catherine. They're two littles. Um, those are our grandbabies, and oh my gosh, they are so cute. Cruz and Cash. Um, that is my son, Elijah. He is 21. That is a lifetime friend, Megan, who is like family to us. How you say, one time you come, your family? She been with us for 15 years, so she definitely family. Yep. Um, that is uh, my little ladybug, 5'10 and 11 years old. Please, somebody come help me feed this child. Yep. And this is, my, uh, this is my dad and his wife, Ronica. That's my second mom. I call her V-mom. And that is my mom, my biological mom, Christy. That's my oldest daughter, Sydney, and her husband, Stephen. And those are two littles. That's Cardin and Kanan. And that's my brother and his daughter. And this is our crew, and this is legacy. And what happens is, and the reason we show you this is because we want you to know that this only could happen if you had a vision. Yep. You because without it, we would have had the one. The one girl right there in the chair, and that's it. Yeah, basically what she's saying right there is, a long time ago, early on in our marriage, when we were faced with the biggest challenge that we had with infidelity, uh, with me going outside of our marriage and being faithful in our marriage at that time, the, the girl that's sitting in the chair with the baby at that time, she was four years old and none of the rest of that existed. None of the none other, of no, nobody else was around. It was just us. And so from that standpoint, a decision that was made that said, God, I trust you more than I even trust my husband but I trust what you're going to do through him, what you're going to do in him. I trust that God in him allowed us to be able to have this 30 years later. That's it. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a shout for that right there <laughs> because she could have threw me away. We could have thrown away an entire family legacy. Yeah. And when, when the world said no, God said yes, That's it. right? When That's the world it. said give up, God said yes. When the world said throw in the towel, God threw the towel right back in there. Some of y'all don't That's know it. what a fight is. You don't know what it looks like to be in a fight. You've never That's really it. been in a fight before. That's it. We've been in a fight. We had to fight for legacy. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's how, when you write the vision and you make it plain, when you come up on times like that, you know what you're doing. Right? Because you're not going to throw the towel in. You know why? Because you know that's what God chose for you. So if... My only choice is, this is what God has for me. My only choice is, what am I doing? How do I do this, God? So that's how we came up with this situation. And this is how we, this is how we do it. I'm sorry. I, I, there was no I mean, that's that a good to place me. to I mean, use it. <laughs> You're welcome. That's a good place to use it. You're welcome. It. Yeah. I give so you we, copyright credit. Yeah. So, thank you. I appreciate that. So, so we celebrate our family. We celebrate big. Uh, we also communicate with each other. All of those family members you see right there, we try and make sure we have touch points where we, we do family texts. We have a, a monthly Zoom call that we just recently started yeah. where we get everybody and we discuss what's going on. What's going on in your life? What's going on in your health? What's going on, you know, and how can we serve you? How can we pray for you? And somebody will be on a call and be like, hey, I've been feeling real lonely. I, you know, pe people haven't been coming around like they need to. And the family can gather around and when we communicate like that, you know what I mean? It, it definitely strengthens the family bond. Absolutely. We congregate. We show up. We support yeah. one another. Listen, we roll deep. I'm be, I, <laughs> Pastor Mark will ask me, so when did you guys come Monday? We rolled with seven people. Like, <laughs> we rolled deep wherever we go. And that was light, I'm going to be honest. That was light. <laughs> it is light. Like, you'd, normally it's like 13 minimum, yeah. 20 really. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah. Look. Yeah, it's, it's tough. <laughs> but, but, like, we roll deep because, I mean, you know, your, your three-year-old, your, your third-grade graduation promotion from third grade to fourth grade, and we roll in 20 deep. Like, is that really necessary? Like, oh, for, yeah, for us, but, it is. <laughs> and, well, and you know why? Because whatever you're doing is important. And the thing yeah. is, is that, like, it's funny, they, they do karate. The littles do karate. And they be breaking boards and be like, yeah! And, the, and our whole thing is like, yay! And they're like, wow, okay, this is a lot. They're more like, really? Like 20, <laughs> 20 of y'all? But guess what? They will never not have somebody in their corner. 
Yeah. They'll never be by themselves. Guess what? You know how we win wars? With each other, back to back, side by side. Yeah. This is a group sport. That's right. Family's a group sport. And so those are the three ways uh, that we love and change. That we celebrate, we communicate, and we congregate. Um, I hope y'all are intentional with your families. And if not, what do you need to do, right, to start being more intentional with your family? And I understand some of you can't be intentional with family members, or maybe you are disconnected from family, or, and I understand that. But here's what I also know. I know that sometimes the word says that uh, sometimes there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I believe God will give you family that may be even closer than your blood relatives, That's right? Okay. Like you, you, you can't choose your relatives, but you do get to choose your family. That's a fact. Somebody missed that. That's a fact. It's okay though. It's okay. I don't think I got a rewind button here in the room. That was good. <laughs> that was good preaching right there. You don't get to choose your relatives, but you do get to choose who your family is. All right. Amen. All right. John 15 and 12 says it this way. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. That's right. How do you want to know how to look like Jesus? Love him, love others like he loved you. How did he love you? Relentlessly. He showed up. God showed up for us, and that's why we show up that's for it. our family members. So our first thing is we are loving intentionally. The second thing that we do is that we are led by our faith. I know a lot of families in here are being led by your faith because faith leads us to hope. It leads yes, it us does. to joy. It leads us to peace. And some of the ways that we are led by our faith uh, is that we walk in authority. Yeah, we do. We do. God has given us authority over the enemy to triumph in all the battles that we're facing. Together, we can take our rightful position of authority. Listen, we speak this word. We pray this word. We live and walk this out. You know yeah. why? This word has power. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And when I speak the word, the word happens. My words may come back void. His never will. That's right. That's right. And so we walk in authority. The next thing we do is we warfare. Uh, yeah. This church knows about warfare. Yeah, they and that's do. a beautiful thing because a lot of people don't recognize that they're in a war. And uh, some of you need to know whether you know it or not, there is a battle that is going on that you may not even be see, can't see and aren't even aware of. There's a war because we have an enemy that seeks to steal and to kill and to destroy. I don't know if you've ever heard that scripture before that the enemy seeks to steal, to kill, and destroy. Can I go there for just a second? I don't think you understand the magnitude of what is happening there. You have an enemy that hates you. He hates your guts. He wants to steal from you. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your marriage. He wants to steal your health. He wants to steal your life. And listen, that's not enough. Stealing isn't enough. He wants to steal it, and then it says he wants to kill it. So that means the thing that he stole from you, he wants to kill it. He wants to kill your marriage. He wants to kill your health. He wants to kill your family. He wants to kill your relationship. And listen, that's not enough. He said he wanted to steal it, he wanted to kill it, and he wants to destroy it, meaning stealing it and killing it isn't enough. Now, I want to destroy your marriage. I want to destroy your family. I want to destroy your health. That's a bad enemy right there that stealing ain't enough, killing ain't enough. He wants to make sure that it was never, ever in existence by destroying it. And so when you recognize that you have an enemy that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy, that means you got to walk differently. You got to live differently. you got to have a different mindset. Otherwise, you're walking around blind. You're like, you're putting yourself out there to be taken out. you got to get your spiritual swag on. What do I mean? Listen, you can't allow something like that to happen. But what I can tell you is that if you walk in the rightful authority that God has given you, your swag is different. You walk different. You're a punk. Listen, you can't have my family. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my health because I know how to fight. I know how to fight my battles. I fight my battles on my knees. That's what I do. Guess what? You can't take this from me. You don't have the authority. And so I walk in the fullness and the authority that God has given me. And this is how I fight my battles. You have to know how to war. Man. 
Don't fight without the weapons that God has given you. Yeah. God's given you that word for a reason. It is the authority to walk on serpents and scorpions, and no deadly thing shall ever harm you. We walk in authority, we warfare, and then we win. And a lot of people don't understand remember, that when I say we win. That's it. You got to remember. All we do is win, 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 no matter what. Got Jesus on my mind and my Jesus is enough. The Holy Ghost step up in the building. Everybody hands go up. And they stay there. And they stay there. And they stay there. Up, down, up, down. Hey, we win. That's it. A lot of times we forget how the book ends because a lot of y'all haven't read through the book the rest to of find the book. out that we win. And you got to understand the same way that some, were, some people in the world want to erase history and want to rewrite stuff. The enemy wants to do the same thing. He wants you to forget that you win. Your marriage wins. Your family wins. And your health, you win. And your life, you win. And your business, you win. And if you don't remember that because you haven't written the vision or the vision that has been written in Revelations that has been written and made plain so you can speak it, you forget that you've won a battle. And the de listen, the devil is a defeated foe. Facts. He is destined for hell. He's trying to take as many people as he can with him. And watch this. The only way the devil went, listen, we've won. We have won. It's we've won. So. We've won. The only way the devil wins is if you forfeit. Amen. Do, do you know what a forfeit is? Forfeit is where you don't show up. A forfeit is where you don't show up for the fight. Or the forfeit is when you say, oh, well, there's no way we can win. And so we throw in the towel or we give in early. You've already, the, it's fixed. That's it. The fight is fixed. You are victorious. You will win. And the only way you forfeit is if you don't show up. Ah, that's a good word for that's somebody out there. You got to show fact. up. That's a fact. You got to show up. That's how we lead our family by faith. We, that's how we, we lead with love. We live by faith, are led by faith. Uh, there's a scripture in Psalm 108, verse 13. It says, with God on our side, we will win. He will defeat our enemies. That's a good word right there. With God on our side, we will win. He will defeat our enemies. And so the third way that we as a family have crafted. Is we live in unity. We live in unity. Unity adds and multiplies. Discord subtracts and divides. Yeah. Listen, one of the key things that you need to do with your family, and, and sometimes it's difficult. I'm not going to tell you it's not difficult, but I'm going to tell yeah. you it's the right thing. We stay together. Unity is imperative. And we, in trial and tragedy, you will see what you're really made of. That's right. If you got those photos, I want to show you something. Um, house fire. Yeah. 2005. You got yeah. those photos? Yeah. 2005. Our house caught on fire. Yeah, it did. <laughs> like burned to the ground. So, so this is so crazy. Like we were in there. I was cooking tacos. Yes. Dear Jesus. In my <laughs> say, that, say that again though, because I, I was, need I was cooking tacos. I had cheetah slippers on, jeans, a white t-shirt, a red apron, and I was cooking tacos because we were getting ready for my son's my oldest son's sixteenth birthday and my mm -hmm. dad's sixty-fifth. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically we were <laughs> in there. And normally I would have taken a shower or I would have cooked and then gone take a shower. For whatever reason on this day, the, now I know was the Holy Spirit had me do this and then cook because that's how I saw the fire from the outside because it started in the backyard. No alarm went off inside the Not house because the fire the started outside the house. The whole backside of my house. house was on fire. Show the I next picture orange. while she's talking. Put the next picture up. Yeah. That's the backside of my house. So, <laughs> so... All I can think about is where are my boys, right? Because when the house starts to fall, I'm like, I'm panicking. My parents are in the house, and I'm like, yo, where are the kids? So they're outside playing basketball. Then I get my parents. They run out of the shower. Okay, some things you shouldn't see. Praise God. Just saying. Too much. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> and we get out. Show the next photo. Is there another photo, or is this just those two? Just I might have just sent okay, two. So okay, so they said we end up getting out, but nothing. Literally, still cheetah slippers, 
jeans, white t-shirt, red apron, looking great, living the dream. <laughs> but everything that we own is in this house. Yeah. Okay. But we're able to escape across the, ho- the uh, driveway to people. Here's the thing. What we learned is what we're made of. And it's not things. That's right. And, and, and let me say this. Listen, when, when that thing burnt to the ground, we're talking a lifetime of things. I'm talking awards, accolades, plaques, uh, um, every, uh, uh, you know, I traveled the world. I, I had signed jerseys from players all over the, I had Jordan signed jerseys. Like, like I had stuff that one could consider very, very valuable. And the thing that we were learning in this process was that at some point, at some point, everything is going to go through fire. That's it. You better Uh, say it. At some point, at some point, everything has to go through fire because that's how things get purified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In order for purification to take place, there has to be fire. And not and when just fire. fire comes, we, we had literal fire. <laughs> the turn up. <laughs> and, and, and the literal fire showed what our life was made up. It showed what our marriage was made up. It showed what our family was made up. It showed what our faith was made up. And we don't want anybody to have to go through, through that. But here's the thing that we learned. Uh, and we're talking about unity right here. Was when we lost everything, that's when we realized that everything wasn't in the things. It was in who we were as a family that came together. That's it. And we actually found ourselves when we lost everything. That's it. Ah, we found ourselves. That's it. When we lost everything. It's crazy because we would come now and we would sit at meals and we would talk and be very intentional and play games. And we became the tightest unit you could ever think of because of the worst tragedy of our life in the moment. Yeah. yeah. We don't want everybody, we don't, we don't want you to lose everything. We're sharing with you how <laughs> our journey got us to where we are now, and it required a lot of us to have to go through something like that, but that's how we stay together. That's because we valued the wrong things. Yeah. And we say that because I want you to put your eyes on the right things. Put your eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on your family. Put yeah. your eyes on the things that matter. Material things don't last. Yeah. And they can't go with you. And we know it's important. It's important to work. It's important to have finance. It's important to be good, savvy businessmen. When God gives us all talents, he wants us to take those talents and flip them things and take the five and make ten. Take the four. Don't just take something and bury it. You know, use scripture. Be wise. But in that, also understand that in being a good steward over your resources, you got to understand there are resources that are intangible, that are in relationship. And relationships are way more important a lot of times than what you get financially. We stay together. The second thing is we play together. We play hard. We We go hard in the paint, y'all. Yo, we play. (laughs) Listen, family vacations, summer, winter, spring, fall, come on. Listen, we, we work really, really hard, but we play super hard. That's right. And that's important. It's important not to forget. Listen, there's a lot of folks that are so busy with work and they're so busy doing stuff that it's almost like you have to force yourself to enjoy life with your family. You've got to force yourself to, to spend time. And listen, that's priorities out of whack right there. You've got to make sure that you are prioritizing your family, your marriage, your legacy, so that when you're doing that, God can, God can trust you with more. He can trust you with more because many of us are exchanging our responsibilities for opportunities. Say you missed that. that. Many times we're exchanging our responsibilities for opportunities. In other words, God gives you responsibilities and the world a lot of times gives you opportunities. But if you are maintaining the responsibility that God gave to you, he can trust you with more opportunities. And when you have that priority and alignment, you watch and see that God is bringing you the opportunities and not the world. I got a story for that, but I'm not going to go there right now. All right. We stay together. We play together. And we pray together as a family. There's power in the agreement of the word. So when we have situations in our family, we make, we 
surround them with scriptures. We pray them back. We pray them over each family member, and everybody's on deck. We know how to war, and this is how we pray together. That's right. Matthew 18 and 20 says, two or more people may meet together because they believe in me. If they do that, I will be there with them. Another way that scripture says that, or where two or three are gathered, God says, I will be there. Jesus says, I'll be there in the midst. And that means when we're in agreement that we're inviting God, we get to come into God's presence. That's it. And his presence changes everything. That's right. Is your family unified? Can you look at your family, not just your, you know, d distant or close relative, but like your immediate family? Are y'all always on the phone? Are you always on iPads or always on modern technology? Are you unified? Do y'all have conversations around the table? Are you intentional about finding out how someone's day was? Do you look people in the eye when you're actually speaking to them? Those are super, super things that help unify your family. And so we, if, if not, what are some ways that, that we as families can bring more unity to our families? It's important. Ephesians 4 and 3 says it this way. Do your best to preserve the unity which the Spirit gives by means of the peace that binds you together. That's the word. Yep. The way that we activate that scripture is by praying it back. We pray as word, and it never comes back void. So we can say, this is how we would pray that scripture back. We will do our best to operate in unity, giving to us by your spirit. The peace is what binds us and keeps our hearts knit together as the Jordan family in Jesus' name. Yeah. And so what she's saying is we take the word of God and we pray it back. So if, if we say, I can do all things that Christ that strengthens me. Okay. We know we can't do, like, I can't go jump off a building and survive or whatever, because that's not what his word is. You, you got to be able to apply it with wisdom, right? But if I'm applying it accurately, when I say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Okay, God, I'm going for this job interview, and I believe that your word says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so I ask you to strengthen me in my going in for this interview so that I say the right things, I do the right things, and I trust that I can do all things through you. I'm actually taking his word and I'm applying it to something specific that he has given me or that he has placed before me. And that's how you activate the word of God uh, into your space. Now, I want to finish out with this. Uh, first, thank y'all for allowing us, for bringing us back to the way. We love it here. Y'all have no idea. Of we love you so much. What, what we shared here is the vision that God has given us for our family. And like I said, vision doesn't come horizontally. So you can look at us and hear us and you could be like, oh yeah, live intentionally. Oh yeah, I can take that. I can take that. That's not what we're here to do. What we're here is to show you how to do it. You see, you missed that. Hey. We're here to show you how to do it. And by doing that, you now know how to go to God and be able to say, okay, God, I got to see the Jordans. They shared how their family functions, this or that. What do you, what do you have for us? What, what is our vision for not just our children, but for our children's children or for our adopted children, for our stepchildren? What is the vision that you have for our family and for our family legacy? What do you want our family legacy to be? And this is important. I want to just share this one little, this one little piece before you. Uh, we have a, a friend amazing friend of ours. Uh, and he's in finance. Like he's a very, very financial mind. Everything he's always done has been money and finance. And one day we're sitting around, we're hanging out. And uh, there's this song by the Temptations uh, that uh, Papa was a rolling stone. Y'all ever heard that song? Wherever he laid his hat was his home. Uh, and when he died, all he left us was alone. Now as a songwriter, those are dope words to me. When he died, all he left us was alone. Because my guy is a financial guy, he was like, oh, my goodness. He's like, my whole life I've heard that song, and I thought he said all he left us was a loan. Yeah. <laughs> he thought that all these years, he thought that song was saying all he left us was a loan. Not a loan by myself, but a loan, like a financial. He left us, like he left us debt is, what, is how he looked at that song. The, the point that, I'm, that I say there is that your lens can affect your legacy. Say it. Your lens can affect it. So in other words, if you have a poverty mentality or a poverty point of view, that deals with your vision. If you have a selfish point of view with your finance, that deals with your vision. And any point of view that you have outside of God's point of view, outside of God's vision, it's going to lead to die vision. Amen. All right. And so I want to give this to you. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says this. 
But the scripture says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him. That's a good word, right? Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has for those that have prepared that he has prepared a vision. And listen, God has prepared a vision for those who love him. And if you don't know how to love him, maybe the greatest way to demonstrate that is to allow him to love you, to allow him to save you, to allow him to cleanse you, to allow him to, what I'm doing right now is I'm casting vision to you. I'm casting vision right now. We're casting because some things are taught, some things are caught. The word of God says in Romans 10 and 9, if you would declare with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord, you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you would be saved. I don't know if there is anybody here uh, who has never made that decision, but I want you to know I know we just had Easter, and it would be easy to, to think that everybody in here is, is saved and on their way to heaven. Like, you, you made it. Congratulations. Those of you who have given your life to Jesus, we are excited for you and proud of you and proud of that decision. But here's what I want you to know. I do believe there may be someone in here who has never fully made that decision to follow Jesus, to make him Lord and Savior. Savior because you need saving, but Lord because you need direction. You need someone to guide you and give you the direction for your life. I'm going to tell you, it's the greatest decision I ever made in my life, giving my life to Jesus Christ. And I want to, I want to make sure that you have that same opportunity today. And so in just a, in just a moment, uh, we're going to say a prayer. And I don't know, I think it the way um, uh, you can demonstrate that this is a decision you want to make uh, by coming down to the front if you want to, if you want to have us pray over you and receive Jesus. Our leaders are going to come and, and be here present for you. And here's what I want to say to you. We're almost done, but this is the most important part of this night, you guys. The worship was fantastic. Hopefully you enjoyed the message on vision, but I'm casting vision right now for somebody that needs to hear my voice. You need to hear the voice of God today. And here's the deal. We can't take anything for granted. We can't take this life for granted. Some of you may have been running. You may be running from God. You may be here tonight and still be running from God. And you know he's been speaking to you. You know he's been calling your name. You know he wants to receive you, but you may be thinking, man, the stuff that I've done has been too much. The things I've been doing, I, I, you know, God, you'd never forgive me for that. I'm too far gone, God. And I want you to know that's a lie. That's the enemy trying to steal, kill, and destroy you. But I want you to know, we have a good father with open arms that is waiting to receive you today. See, people are coming. I ain't even got to say it yet. But you know that the Holy Spirit is working on your heart right now. And it's saying, if you would believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you would be saved today. And maybe today is your day. Maybe today is your day to give your life to Jesus. And if you want to do that, I'm going to ask you, would you be courageous? Would you just come down the front so we can pray for you? That's all we want to do. We just want to, I see you, homie, my guy. Best decision you could ever make in your life. This is where you're going to spend eternity. You're making a decision of where you're going to spend eternity. And I don't know if that's you, but if it is you, don't play with this thing. Don't, don't wait. This is your moment. This is your time to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's got his arms wide open. He is waiting for you. He's ready to grow you. He's ready to love you. He is not angry at you. God is not mad at you. He loves you. Somebody needed to hear that. God is not angry at you. He loves you. He's not mad at you. He's not here to shame you. He's not here to ridicule you. He's here to love you. He's got people here and pastors and leaders and friends and community that are ready to love you, to love you even in your mess. Ah, even in your sin, you don't have to say, because listen, somebody's saying right now, well, let me get myself right and then I'll come back. You can't get yourself right. You can't do that. Now is the time to come and give your life to Jesus and he'll make you right. He'll make you cleansed. He'll make you whole again. Come on.
Is there one more? Is there, is there anybody? Did you know Jesus is calling you? If that's you, don't wait. Don't wait. This is your moment. We're going to say a prayer together. And this is your moment. Thank you, Jesus. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. Listen, the timer has gone off, but I'm waiting. God is waiting for you. He says you're just that valuable. He says you're just that valuable that he'll wait. For your, your soul matters just that much that he'll wait for you. He'll wait for you. This is just a, st just be courageous. We don't have to beg. You, you know the Lord is speaking to you. Be courageous. I see you, my guy. Just be courageous. This is your moment. This is between you and God. This is between you and God. What if this was the last service? Ah, what if, what if this is, what if you can't wait till next Wednesday when, when Jonathan Conker, what, what if this is it? Wouldn't you want to be right right now? Wouldn't it be good to get that insurance, that, that insurance? This is fire insurance, people. Right now, this is fire insurance. And it's free. And it costs you everything because it cost him everything. I see you. I see you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Yeah, listen. Come on. Let's celebrate those that are coming right now. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing. It's called surrender. Praise God. This is surrender. This is surrender. All right, listen. We're going to say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer. And our leaders are here at the front. They're going to pray with you. They're going to love on you. But here's what I want to do. I want to say a prayer with you. Yeah, come on. I'm, wait, hey, listen. Come on. Come on. I see you, sis. Way to go. You might be here with a friend. Maybe your friend is afraid. To, just tap your friend. Tap the person next to you and say, is that you? If you want, I'll, I'll come down with you. If, you. if you want to go down, I'll come with you. You ain't got to do this by yourself. You have to stand before God by yourself. But today you can make a decision with somebody that'll help you. That's what we do with the way. That's what we do with the way. All right, we're going to say a prayer. And please hear me. All eyes this way for just a second. Before our leaders pray with you, all eyes this way, just for a moment. This prayer that we're going to pray is not a finish line. It's not a finish line. It's a starting point yes, God. for brand new relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, God. Yes, God. Okay? This is a starting point. So listen, it's okay to start the race. It's okay to walk. It's okay to crawl. It's okay to run. This is a race. It's a lifelong race. It's not the finish line. This is the start. And your church is going to come alongside of you and they're going to love you through this. They're going to walk you through this. They're going to teach you through this. They're going to give you tools that you're going to need to know how to run this race because it's a race. You can run it at your pace. It's not a finish line, but this is a starting point. And all you have to do, let's bow our heads and let's pray, okay? Just repeat after me. Just say, Jesus, Jesus I love you. I love you. You love me first. You love me first. You love me more. You love me more. I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. I need a savior. I need a savior. I believe. I believe. You're my savior. You are my savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You're the son of God. You are the son of God. You came to this world. You came to this world. For me. For me. You died on a cross. You died on a cross. For me. For me. You went to the grave. You went to the grave. For me. For me. And you rose again. And you rose again. For me. For me. You did it 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 for me. So come into my heart. So come into my heart. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. I turn from the old me. I turn from the old me. I turn to you. I turn towards you. Be my Lord and Savior. Be my Lord and Savior. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Now in Jesus' name. 
name, if you are able, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands all over this building. Lift your hands. Uplifted hands is a universal sign of surrender. You're saying, I surrender my life to you, God. I surrender my ways to you, God. I surrender my inadequacies to you. I surrender uh, my doubt to you. I surrender my fear to you. It's universal sign of surrender. Uplifted hands is also a universal sign of receiving. You're saying, God, I receive your forgiveness today. I receive your healing today. I receive your salvation today. I receive your gift of a new life and new relationship with you today. And I receive it into my heart in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Come on, Pastor. Help me out. Guide me what we do next Come here. Come on. Can we give Montel Jordan and Kristen Jordan a big round of applause if you were blessed today by their their heart and their ministry. For those that are up here, as he said it, our next step is a class called Holy Warriors and actually baptism. So prayer warriors, I know you guys are praying already. Your next step is to get baptized. Well, church, we love you. God bless you. We pray that God blesses you and God touches you and God sends you. We love you so much, church. Remember, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.